Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Parvati here and today I'm just going to be showing a week in the life of a few meals and um, desserts that I'm going to be making with my son. Also going to be reorganizing my kitchen cabinet, so let's go ahead and get into it. If you guys hear any baby coos in the background of this video, it's because I have my daughter right here with me while I'm doing my voiceover. So, right here, I have so much discard, okay? I've been making a lot of breads, so I have a lot of discard. So I said, hey, let's just go ahead and make some ginger snaps. And this recipe, I am working on to go ahead and post it to the blog. This recipe can definitely be totally gluten-free, or even if you were to make it with regular gluten flour, it doesn't necessarily have to be sourdough. So I'm going to make those recipe modifications in the recipe card once I do put this up on my blog. And the gluten-free recipe will just be a totally separate recipe from the gluten and non-sourdough versions. I really love baking with my son. He's four, so he's at that age where he really, really wants to help with anything that you're doing at all. So I just go ahead and grab him and bring him in the kitchen with me to help and he's always really really happy to help me do that um and also it's it's really good to do so that your children will be more willing to help you in the future if you need them if you incorporate them with more household chores um with my oldest son who's 12 you know I was really young when I had him so I really didn't understand the importance of having your child be in the kitchen with you or just helping you with chores. I started to catch on to that when my 12 year old was like, I believe 10, you know, so um, I started to change some things. He's a little bit older, so you might get a little bit more resistance. But after a while, once you keep up a good routine of having them help you in the kitchen and just making it fun, it really is a good benefit for the family. So um, right here, this is the next morning and I wanted to make a special breakfast. So for our family, we don't eat bread a whole lot. Like I don't buy bread from the store. So when I buy, so when I make bread at home, it's pretty special. So I decided to make some bagels and I didn't film it, but I just prepared the dough the night before with just some flour, water, salt and my sourdough starter and let it auto leats and then I put it in um, my refrigerator to ferment overnight um, and then you know I just kneaded the dough and all that and um, right here you could just see me shaping the dough now this isn't necessarily the best technique for this because you're supposed to roll it in your palm with your hand through the hole but when I was doing it I totally forgot and I was wondering why do my donuts look so wonky but I forgot. I really, it's funny because I remembered when I was sitting down eating my donuts. Any donuts, bagels. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's the whole story with those bagels. And these are my little kittens. They're so adorable. Um, it's my last set of kittens that I have here. So those are my forever kittens. Um, her, their, their mother and grandmother I had first and then... These are my little kitties that was from the last litter of cats. Whew, that was a big mouthful. I've had a lot of cats, basically. Um, so this is the next morning, and I'm making gluten-free pancakes. And the base of this is my almond flour. Um, I make my own all-purpose almond flour. I make my own all-purpose gluten-free flour mix. Um, and... You know, I pretty much have it down pat now on what type of flowers that I like to use for my gluten-free flowers. Um, I made a whole little like recipe guide or um, gluten-free baking guide for gluten-free baking just in general. It's linked in the description box if you guys want to figure out the ins and outs of gluten-free baking. Just a really quick guide to explain the different flowers, starches, and what you need, you know, to get a really good... Um, gluten-free flour mix but um, I pretty much have gotten this down to a science now like to me this was like the best pancake I've ever had in my life 
I really prefer almond flour pancakes over regular wheat flour pancakes or the sourdough ones. That's just my preference. I feel like they have more flavor. Um, but these ended up getting a little darker <laughs> than what I would have wanted. You know, I have a baby, I have a newborn baby. So a lot of my time gets taken up with her and I totally forgot I even had freaking pancakes on the stove. How about that? So this is, um, another breakfast. This is a usual breakfast that me and my sons enjoy. Now my husband is not a porridge eater. You cannot pay him to eat porridge. He just won't do it. You know, um, no shot to the Americans out there, but my husband is an American and, you know, I didn't grow up with like a traditional American, um, breakfast and I don't really think he did either because, you know, cereal, I don't really think we could say that's like a traditional American breakfast, but, um, he would prefer cereal. He's not into the whole porridge thing, you know, as a West Indian or maybe even like a South American we really get down with the porridge, okay? <laughs> but he's not so into it. Um, this right here, this bread, I'm making a raisin cinnamon bread. And I'm rushing. I don't know if you guys can tell. Like, I did not speed up this footage at all. Like, I'm rushing to try and make this. Um, it turned out a little wonky. I had it rise. Not like how you see me doing it. I just had it rise as like a normal... Um, sourdough loaf bread but then my son was like hey mom remember I wanted it you know he wanted a raisin <laughs> raisin cinnamon loaf and I was like oh my god I forgot so I took it out and then redid it I feel like that was my downfall if any of you guys are into bread making and know like if you're having something rise and then remove it from its original shape and then reshape it does that mess something up I feel like it messed up my bread but I'll show you guys in a bit like what it turned out like. I mean, obviously it tastes delicious. It's delicious, but it looks wonky as heck. Um, you know, and this is not my first time making um, cinnamon raisin bread, but it didn't turn out like the other times where it was like perfect. And I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. So I'm not going to lie. I was not happy with my results. But my children were happy and they weren't making it a big deal. So I wasn't making it a big deal. It wasn't a big deal. But deep down in my heart, I felt like, wow, I could have done better. But I'm rushing and I have a newborn baby. So it is what it is. You know, it's edible. <laughs> so, you know, I'm there giving my son a piece. And it tastes amazing. I slathered mine down in some delicious New Zealand butter from uh, Costco freaking butter tastes so amazing. So this is, um, my sourdough starter right here. It's super active and nice and bubbly. I'm about to make some dinner rolls to go along with some soup, some leftover soup that I had made the night before. Um, and these are just like the simplest dinner rolls. They're so simple. I don't even know if I could be allowed to call them dinner rolls because I didn't use any milk. I didn't use any butter and that is like a key ingredient in um, rolls is, you know, milk and butter. And this is my big accident. I left them in the oven too, too long. I already told you guys I have a newborn. And then I got on the phone with my husband because he's picking up a little toy chest for the children. And I was on the phone with him and I forgot that I turned my oven on broil mode just for a minute to just brown the tops of my rolls to make them just perfect like how I like it. And it ended up like this. But, you know, actually the children were telling me like, it's not a big deal, mommy. It still tastes good. Like, it's not a big deal. So that made me feel better about it. But they were actually delicious. Like, I couldn't even taste all that char. My cabins are really, really um, disorganized. Truly, truly disorganized. I'm gonna show you guys what they look like. Um, I'm gonna, I had my, I had OL buy me some um, glass um, jars from the dollar store. Um, and I wanna use those to go ahead and organize my spice cabinet. It really, really needs some help, like crazy help. <laughs> Um, since I've been pregnant and uh, postpartum, I haven't had any time to get to, um, 
reorganizing my cabinet because I was working for a good bit of that time during my early and middle parts of my pregnancy. So I didn't have any time to like the vlog. Put on these. These are the um, glass containers that he bought for me from the dollar I store. I won't break it. So you say you won't break them? Mm -hmm. Um, for me to put like my curries in and my masala. Now, some um, of my spices, I don't want to go in these very long jars because I don't have that much of it like black pepper. You know, black pepper doesn't have to go in such a big jar, but like my curries and my other types of spices be perfect for that. Honestly, it's really a long time coming for me to organize my cabinets because Oh my gosh, even the before pit uh, video that I have to show you guys, it's not even showing exactly how everything looked because I am an avid home scratch, from scratch, whatever scratch, home cook. Like I have a lot of spices. This is just one cabinet, okay? One cabinet and whenever I go to the farmer's market, I always get those medium-sized bags of curry, medium-sized bags of turmeric, Italian seasoning, any spice, you name it. And I usually just shove the bag in my freaking cabinet and I pull it out whenever I need it. And then when I open it, I put it in a Ziploc bag and it just looks like a freaking mess, just to be honest. It looks a mess and it just felt like a mess every time I'd open up my cabinet. It wouldn't feel very beautiful, you know? So I really just wanted to go ahead and change that and it's still a work in progress. Um, so... I had to take out some time to do my son's hair. Both of my sons have very long locks. Well, they're not very long, but they're pretty long for boys. Um, this is my youngest son. He has micro locks. I locked his hair when he was two years old in these micro locks. And you might be wondering, like, why on earth would you ever lock a two-year-old's hair? Listen, he did not like his hair to get combed at all. And I didn't want to cut it off because he has very beautiful hair. If you guys want to see a whole video dedicated to my son's lock routine, um, let me know. Drop a comment in the comment section and let me know what type of videos you guys want to see next, okay? Love you all. Peace. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Wait a minute, I think you just made it super easy for somebody to learn how to dance.